Borak Thung Earthlets, and welcome to Goldfish on Games. Well you may or may not know, I'm a bit of a fan of 2000 AD, and as such I think it's time we check out one of its most popular strips. I am of course talking about Judge Dredd. For those who don't know 2000 AD or Judge Dredd, here's a quick primer. 2000 AD is an anthology comic that's been running since the 70s. New issues, or progs as they're called, are released every week, and they typically have 3 to 5 stories in each one. Some are one-offs, but others are multi-part epics. Now one of the longest running strips is Judge Dredd, the lawman of the future who is judge, jury and executioner on the streets of Mega City 1, a city that covers a large part of the United States, and he is the law. Judge Dredd also has his own comic series known as The Megazine, which just hit its 30th anniversary, as well as two films and a good number of games, and even a song. And based on the name of this channel, I think we're going to be checking out the games. The first was simply called Judge Dredd, and it launched in 1986 for the Commodore 64 and in 87 for the ZX Spectrum and is an open-ended game in which you head out to various locations to take down perps. But you better be quick, or if the number of cases get too high, you'll get the dreaded Crime Now Rages message, and it's game over. Now there are a range of crimes, and as such, you actually have a range of offensive options. From just yelling HALT at them, firing warning shots, or using live ammo. The perps themselves always look the same, so you'll always know when you found them, but finding them is the tricky bit. And when you do finally track them down, you'll have to try and take them down, either by arresting them or by just taking them out. Now, As I've mentioned, finding the perps is the real challenge as the levels are surprisingly complex and it's not the easiest to navigate as floors will randomly drop out from underneath you and you'll go plummeting. Though if you look at the bottom of the screen you will see a hint of where they can be found, but it doesn't really seem to help as half the time I have no idea which floor or screen I'm currently on, let alone where they are. The second game was also called Judge Dredd, and launched on the Amiga, Atari, CPC as well as the Spectrum and the C64, which means those last platforms got two games with the exact same name. Yep, I don't think this is going to get confusing at all. Now after the previous game's more interesting take on Dread, this is far more simplified, with it being your more typical walk and gun platformer, which is set over multiple large levels. Typically you'll have a goal of trying to take out a number of objects or objectives in each level, that can be really quite spread out, which means you have to pay attention to the crime meter, as it will slowly tick up with time, and if it fills, it's game over. You can reduce it by taking down level specific enemies, but avoid shooting the regular citizens, as that will increase the meter instead. There is even the Lawmaster, but it's mostly useless, as the crime rate will increase while using it, and you can't move up or down the level while riding it. The hardest part of this game is actually finding the objectives and trying to get up the ramps. <coughs> In 1993 we got a new take on Judge Dredd, who moved out to the arcades in the Judge Dredd Pinball Table, which was part of Pinball Arcade, but has since been delisted. But we can still check out the trailer, as I have no way of filming the real thing or even the game version. Overall it looks like quite a fun table, with a lot of nice touches, and it's one that I'll have to be on the lookout if I ever get to an arcade again, or I manage to find a key for Pinball Arcade. 100 million. The first Judge Dredd film dropped in 1995, and the less we say about the film, the better. I knew you'd say that. A tie-in game quickly followed that hit the SNES, Mega Drive, DOS, and even a few handhelds. And as was typical for the time, it was a platformer and it loosely followed the action of the film. Thankfully this time around, everything is more detailed and in keeping with Dread than the last platformer. You get the option to arrest people, which will result in some bonuses. 
but the gameplay itself tends to tread very similar ground. You have to go around the levels, taking out or arresting the perps, while completing objectives. The game does deviate from the film's plot by including the Dark Judges, which you have to encase in Boing if you want to defeat. There's even a shoot 'em up section that helps break up the action. Amazingly, you can actually still get this right now on Steam. And we didn't have to wait too long to get the next game as it launched in 1997. It was released in the arcade and on the PS1, and I'll give you three guesses what it was called. Yep, Judge Dredd. This time it was a light gun game that worked with both of the PlayStation's light gun formats. It doesn't tread any new light gun ground with its gameplay, as it's pre-rendered video sequences in which baddies and innocents pop up. But this time the baddies are 3D models, that sort of look out of place. And half the time they just suddenly appear and the rest they just fade in while already shooting at you. Thankfully the backgrounds aren't completely static as you can shoot out screens and other elements to get power ups and limited upgrades. The concept behind the game is great, and it has some surprisingly well done fully active cutscenes, even if Dread looks a little forced. If I see any other judges, you won't believe what happens next. We're working on his identity, sir. Nothing yet. Dread? High explosive. What? You're going down, punk. Amazingly, just a year later, we got another pinball game, but this time it was computer pinball called Judge Dread Pinball, and was released for DOS and Windows. There is just a single table which is different from the physical machine we saw earlier. It looks quite nice, with quite a nice detailed LCD display, though most of the interactive elements are near the top of the table, which doesn't really help when the camera angle is fixed, so you see most of the bottom of the screen. Thankfully there are lots of nice dread touches, with you having to take down dark judges, getting to visit side division or even upgrading your bike. I will say the ball feels a little heavy and it feels more like it's falling rather than rolling down, so it's not the best pinball game or table out there but it is a nice novelty to check out. It took 5 years before we got another game, and in 2003 we got Judge Dredd, Dredd vs Death, which came out on PC, PS3, Xbox and Gamecube. And not only did we get an original name, but it was also the first game made by the owners of the comic Rebellion Developments. This is a first person shooter that is actually quite faithful to the comics. You get the Lawgiver, with its number of different modes, and you can even hold on to a second weapon that you can switch to at any time. You'll have to keep track of your ammo, health, shield, as well as the justice meter. This will go up every time you arrest a perp and decrease when you take out a citizen. Seeing this is Judge Dredd, some of the criminals will literally just give up if you shout at them, which is quite nice, but others might need a little persuasion from the lawgiver before they give up. Unsurprisingly, based on the name, the Dark Judges also show up. But they are not the scariest thing in this game. No, that's reserved for the in-game product placement as cans and logos for Red Bull will show up, which I'm sure would have been outlawed in Mega City 1. The next four games are mostly mobile titles, which isn't my favourite platform to play on. In fact, I'd rather play on any other platform than mobile but I will still show them off the best I can. The first was a Java game released in 2004 and targeted multiple mobile platforms that supported Java, and it's a plod and gun game. 
in which you take down multiple enemies as you travel around the levels trying to find the missing judge. You get a few weapons including Standard Issue, which kills, the Stun Shot, which is used to arrest the creeps, and there's also Gas Bullets, which seem to take down multiple perps at once. And when you get to the end of the level, you get to save a judge, which mostly means shooting at them and then making sure you use a Stun Shot at the end. The judge is just another copy of your sprite, so you better keep track of who is who. Being an earlier Java game, it's not the easiest to get running, and the game might be better if I manage to get audio to work, but it's not bad for what it is. In 2012, Dread hit the cinemas, and was much better. Inhabitants of Peach Trees. This is Judge Dread. Mama is not the law. I am the law. And while it didn't get a game directly based on it, we did get another game that year called Judge Dread vs Zombies, which hit most major mobile platforms and is still possible to buy today. The menu artwork is based on the movie timeline, but the game models are all classic Dread. On my way. The game is a top-down shooter that has you running around, as you might have guessed, shooting zombies. There are a set number that you need to take out for each level, and there's shields that you can collect to increase your points. Being a mobile game, you are ranked, and you get in-game credits to buy and upgrade your weapons, which obviously can be bought with real money. It's a simple enough game that would have been better with dual sticks, as you wouldn't have to have relied on the auto-aiming system, or having to tap on barrels when you wanted to target them. I've got a bad feeling about this. There was also a second game released in 2012, which was called Judge Dread Countdown Sector 106, which also came out on a number of mobile platforms as well as PC. But the license ran out, so you can't get it anymore. The game itself seems to be similar in style to the Choose Your Own Adventure books, which featured an entirely new story and artwork that was made just for this game. Just like those Choose Your Own Adventure books, you have to make choices of what you want to do and roll in-game dice at important moments. Or at least that's what it looks like you need to do from the trailer and the website. It looks cool enough for what it is though. The final game for now is 2019's Judge Dread Crime Files, which launched on iOS and Android. They call the game a strategy RPG, but really it's a card game, in which you have to use cards to take on various creeps out on the street. This includes using various modes of the Lawgiver, as well as using your day stick and arresting people. It's just that it's managed to distill everything I hate about gaming, and mobile gaming in particular, and put it into a single title. On the plus side, it's still being updated and you can still get it today, even if I don't think I'll ever play it again. Which wasn't how I wanted to end the video, so instead, let's talk about some of the unreleased games, which included an 8-bit game that showed up in previews in various magazines, along with some pictures, which showed it to be a rail shooter, but outside of that, very little is known. The other was a scrolling beat-em-up arcade game that used the then popular digitised art style and had Dread going out and punching and kicking people. While Dread was known for throwing the odd punch and hitting people with his day stick, his lawgiver was his real takedown of choice. It's a shame that this never really got released as it would have been really fun with a few mates. Judge Dread! In over 30 years, Dread has managed to pick up quite a few games across a wide range of genres and platforms, which isn't too bad for a comic strip from the UK, and if you had a favourite, I'd love to hear about it. So until next time, I was the Goldfish, he was the Law, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching my video, I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, you can let me know down in the comments, or you can use those buttons just below, you know the ones I mean. Or if you're not sure yet, then you can check out two other videos that I've done that are on the screen right now. So thank you again, and I hope to see you soon.